What's up, everybody? Jason here with another review. Well, Star Wars fans, the moment we've been waiting for has finally arrived. The three-part premiere of Andor has finally hit Disney Plus after years of waiting. I'm going to talk about it. But first, I want to throw out a bit of a spoiler warning. Um... I'm going to try to keep this as minimal on the spoilers as I possibly can, but um, some spoilers might leak out, or uh, depending on what people view as a spoiler, I just want to cover my bases. I don't want to ruin anything for anybody. Um, So if spoilers aren't your thing and you haven't watched the first three episodes of Andor yet, head on over to Disney Plus and check it out. Uh, If you've already seen the first three episodes of Andor or spoilers don't matter to you, you've been warned. Let's get on with the video. Um... I first want to start by saying this series is off to a really strong start. Uh, Tony Gilroy, who is known for um, working on the original Bourne films, um, definitely brings a new layer of you know something special to the Star Wars universe. Uh, he brings a bit more of a of a of more realism than ever before and and uh, and much more gravity to what's going on um and i really like that uh diego luna continues to prove why he was you know he's the best person for the role of cassie and andor um he's just playing he just he, he plays it as a as a sort of you know, a, a, a man who will do whatever he has to do to survive. He'll, he'll barter, steal, lie, whatever he has to do. Um, and I think it's interesting because those parts of him are still there when we meet him in Rogue One. Um, this series is clearly working to set up, you know, how he came from, how he came to use those skills to become the, you know, super awesome rebel spy turned hero. Uh, that we know from that film. Um, this is definitely more mature of a take on Star Wars than we've ever seen before. Um, I'm not saying it's so mature that your kids can't watch it. You can still watch it with the whole family. It's just a few things may go over the heads of the younger kids. I'd probably recommend maybe uh, 12 and older. Um it, but I'll leave that up to you. Um, I will say right off the bat, this is the first time that it's ever actually, you know, implied, heavily implied that sex is a thing in the Star Wars universe. I mean, up to then, up to this point, um, it's kind of been sort of a an unspoken thing. I mean, the flirting and everything, and then, of course, uh, uh, reproduction. But... Um, Never has it actually been like expli- you know, specifically um, uh, hinted at, you know, you know, pointed out. But uh, this series actually does. Again, it's not. It's not like it's not super mature that the kids can't watch it. Um, it's just is a bit more. There's a bit more. Uh, you know that adults can appreciate for example this is the first on-screen use of the word shit in a star wars anything movie tv show anything uh that was a bit of a shock for me when i saw that i was like whoa okay this is that show so um but i think it's nice because it's kind of a lot of times star wars is for kids let's just get that put that out there star wars is as a thing that's for kids george lucas created it for kids and everything up to this point has really been geared more towards kids um but as an adult i can understand why people might want some edgier content and uh the mandalorian and rogue one certainly provided some of that but i think this is series is the answer for those who are looking for a little more edge to their star wars shows uh certainly that's that's the case in these first three episodes um one thing i thought was really cool kind of sort of a nerd thing for me was this is also the first on-screen use of the uh of the of the time stamp bby uh for those not in the know i'm just going to use do a brief description um 
Time in the Star Wars universe is measured in BBY and ABY, before the Battle of Yavin and after the Battle of Yavin. Using the original Star Wars movie as kind of the the, the focal point for the Star Wars timeline. Um, and up until this point, it's sort of been an unspoken thing. Sure, it's been used in reference books and, you know, um, uh, novels and, and maybe a, the occasional video game comic book, but it's never really been used on screen. But wh- when that timestamp of 5 BBY, meaning this series actually takes place five years before the events of Rogue One and A New Hope, um, I was really like, whoa. They're actually using it. That was really cool. That was really cool. That was a cool nerd moment. To, it, it was nice to see Disney like full on acknowledge the uh, uh, use of BBY in a Star Wars show. That was really cool. Um, these first, you know, these first two episodes, these first three episodes are very similar to the way that the Obi Wan premiere was structured, in that. It's more of a drawn out character piece in these first few episodes. And then we start to get into the meat. I mean, that's more, more prevalent in the first two episodes. Everything's kind of building towards something. There are certainly beats of action at least in the first, in the first and the third episode, the second episode really kind of tries to, again, to take, take more time with the exposition, get to know the char- get to know the players and what's going on. But, um, Episode three is, is out of all three of these episodes, episode three is the most rocking. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, um, full on siege, uh, siege mode in this, uh, in this episode. And it was really, it was really cool to kind of see, to see that play out. Um, something I did, you know, that was, that I've, that's been mentioned in a few reviews, and I actually noticed when watching was there's a nice subtle kind of sort of a reference to the uh, the the beacons of Gondor uh, in the Lord of the Rings in a moment in here. You'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, you know what I'm talking about if you've seen the episodes, but you'll see what I'm talking about if you, when you finally watch them. Um, I mean, it's, there's just so much mystery surrounding Stellan Star- Skarsgård's character that I can't wait to see it how it unfolds um he's definitely he's definitely that air of mystery is definitely working to his advantage because when he first came onto the scene i was very intrigued about his character um and i can't wait to see more of what he's trying to do and why he's trying to do it and also why he specifically wants cassian to help him now i obviously it has a lot to do with the uh, rebel alliance but to see you know his specific motivations i think is going to be really cool moving forward um just the 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 world building in this episode is these episodes is also fantastic this star wars series like the production value is just extraordinary um this is the first star wars show to not utilize stagecraft uh stagecraft is uh, the use of what was what's known as the volume. It's a room of LED um, video screens that you can project a background, any background you want, and the lighting's so bright and you can you can set it up any way that it's almost as if you're filming on location. And um, this show went out of its way not to use that technology and it definitely shows i'm a huge fan of of using stagecraft i think it's really cool i think it's a cheap way to make movies heck they used it uh in the first the first one of the first big theatrical features to make use of stagecraft was the batman this past year and and it was it looked amazing um but i can admit that having watched so many episodes of uh, Book of Boba Fett and um, The Mandalorian and even uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, that at times stagecraft can fall a little flat. So it's nice, li- <laughs> pun intended, you know, pun intended, but it's nice to see a show make good use of practical sets and locations and put some effort into, you know, just the cl- the old ways of filmmaking. Um this show because of that there are many reasons but but that being a big one is why this show is already a cut above the rest 
I mean, and the music, the score is so, I mean, it really keeps things rolling. It keeps things driving. I mean, it drives the scenes, you know, and, um, uh, Nicholas, uh, Bristol, uh, the, the composer, uh, for this, for this series, um, uh, he does a fantastic job with that. Um, I, 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 I got, you know, I got some, uh, and I know this might be a bit cliched and this might be an overused, um, uh, this may be an overused, uh, analogy, but I got some serious Blade Runner vibes from this show just based on the music. And then of course the opening scene, the neo-noir style of the opening scene of the first episode, the first episode, the opening scene of the first, if you are not, if the first few minutes of the, of the first episode doesn't draw you in. I mean, nothing else will, because that's just, it's just an amazing, I mean, it's so well shot. The lighting is so, you know, is so, uh, I mean, the lighting is perfect. Everything's just so well done in that opening sequence. Um, it just, it just, it, I was intrigued from, from minute one. Um, as I had said before, this series is off to a really strong start. I can't wait to see more of i can't wait to see more of andor uh we've got uh nine episodes left through uh through the rest of the season and i'll be reviewing them all um as far as these three episodes um individually i would give them different ratings but i'm going to lump them all together since that's what we got and it does feel more like a i mean each watching them all back to back makes it feel more like a cohesive you know three hour you know two and a half three hour premiere than um than just doing them individually and i think it was i think it's better for them to be for it to be released three episodes at a time in that first for the premiere instead of one at a time i think i think it would have done it a huge disservice but that being said i would give these first three episodes a 4.5 out of five um let me know what you thought of the first three episodes of Andor down in the comments. I love hearing from you. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, click that notification bell to get updates on all my future videos. Um, I never mention in any of my videos, but I have a Twitter. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter at call me J Sumner. Um, yeah, just follow me. I'll follow you back. We can, we can, uh, chat there too i'm always happy to happy to uh talk movies and tv shows and stuff um thank you so much for watching as always i really do appreciate it you have no idea and until the next one may the force be with you bye